Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. And today, I'll be reacting to The History of Humanity, The Commissar's Guide to Warhammer 40k by Old Man Lore Stories and Theory. I highly recommend you check out Old Man's stuff if you're not doing so already. He, 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 know, he knows the lore well, and he also presents it in, in an entertaining manner, especially his five-ish minute lore series where he presents the lore in the form of a usually relatively short rant. And as always, there'll be a link to the original video in the description box below. Uh, but without further ado, let's let's begin. This is going to be different. I'm going to be different. I rant and rave about people and places. I roar about the Tao being worthy of nothing but extermination. I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm going to talk to you all about the Imperium. Where we came from. Why we are the way we are now. I assume if you're listening to this, you're either just curious as to what I'm going to say, or you're someone who knows nothing and wants to know more. If I sound bitter, it's because I am. You can call me the Commissar. I am, or was, a member of the Ordo Perfectus and the Imperial Guard, and I have lost much for the sake of the Imperium. I have so much more to give, but for now, all I have to give is what I know. So with that being said, I'm going to answer a question. Why does the Imperium exist the way that it does? Where did we come from? Why are we here? Most importantly, why are we like this? Well. Well, one very quick way to, to, to say why the Imperium is the way it is, is basically humanity has been traumatized, like, collectively. Let me begin. The Golden Age of Humanity ended so violently and so long ago, we don't even have records of it. The last hope we had as a species sits as a rotting carcass of a man writhing in agony, clinging to life to simply keep us going after he was betrayed by his own creations over 10,000 years ago. The dream that man tried to bring to reality has turned into a waking nightmare that none of the countless trillions of humanity could ever wake up from. You as a person, at best, or a microscopic cog in a galaxy-spanning machine, and when you die and die you shall, no one will care. I hate to tell you this. I wish it was different. I know that that man, who even now sits shrieking into the void, wanted it to be different. And in some cases, is actually dying it is is not something that, thing that you well that that happens normally by that I mean aside from the obviously murdered by some monstrosity from what is essentially super hell well, there's well, if you're say a factory worker when you reach the point where your body is so broken then by well repeated back breaking labor and extremely long work shifts that you just can't continue. You, they're not going to just let you die. They're going to turn you into corpse starch. I guess the best place to start is the beginning. There are five major stages in humanity's story, and they can best be summed up as the dawning of civilization, the golden age of technology, the age of strife, the great crusade, and the age of the Imperium. 
I'm going to be extremely vague. Otherwise, I'd be talking about some of these periods for literally hours on end. I'm also going to have to cut out a lot of context, which will probably come out later if this elucidation is something that is enjoyed. The dawning of civilization would have been a wonderful time to have been alive. It started when humanity founded its first cities and lasted for several thousand years. Even then, humanity looked to the stars and saw its future there, far away. Pricks of light in the dark sky, unreachable. There is so little that has survived that any relics from this time period are held in vaults by some of the most powerful people in the Imperium. And some are held by other creatures entirely. Humanity spread is such as Trazin the Infinite, who I'm willing to bet probably has a bunch of relics like from this age of human history, whether because he was active during this time or because he simply time-traveled in order to nab them before they were lost. Spread across our birth world, and then we began to look to the stars. It was slow, in some cases it was painful, but eventually we looked to the stars and saw something not unreachable, but something within our grasp, and saw not our future, but our now. In the solar exodus that followed, humanity used sublight engines to colonize surrounding star systems. Contact with other species was made, and as strange as it may sound, especially now, it was actually peaceful. This is because of the galactic superpower of the time, the Aldari. The Aldari Empire itself had been around for tens of millions of years, and had descended into a hedonistic and self-absorbed culture long before humanity's ancestors came out of the trees. To sum up the Aldari Empire's state of affairs nice and tight, unless someone caused a problem, they didn't even look or care. The one thing they did was keep more belligerent, hostile, and deadly species in check leaving other species, including ourselves, to grow and thrive. Humanity was advancing quickly, and due to either genetic manipulation or just a strange mutation, certain humans were born with a specific abnormality. This abnormality allowed them to see into something that is called the Immaterium, and using these abnormal humans' gifts, humanity was finally able to travel faster than light. These mutated humans were called Navigators, and their appearance brought in the golden age of humanity. A thing to note as well is, in addition to the fact that the Eldari Empire kept more belligerent species such as the orcs in check, there's also the fact that they had actually locked away the Chaos Gods and essentially partitioned the warp so that, so that the influence of Korn, Zinch, Inch, and Nurgle was so small as to be essentially negligible, if I remember correctly. And as a result, the warp was also relatively calm, I think, given the, the Eldar's control over it to the point where they could just create gods whenever enough of them wanted to. Now at this point I need to talk about something I mentioned briefly, the Immaterium. You may have heard this referred to as the Sea of Souls or the Warp. To take a huge explanation and simplify it, it's a parallel universe that is bonded parasitically to our own. The Immaterium is fed by and fueled by emotions and life in general. Most intelligent species are bound to both universes by having a soul. The soul of a being binds it to both universes at the same time, and when the physical body dies, the soul flies free into the Immaterium. It sounds so peaceful and serene until you realize there are planet to star system sized creatures living in the warp that devour them. Smaller creatures that just rip the soul apart and, well, there are other beings left unsaid. In fact, the best way to actually describe the Immaterium is to use an archaic term. Just call it hell, because in all reality, that's exactly what it is. Back when humanity first spread to the stars, however, the Immaterium was for the most part calm and placid, easy to navigate. That would change. 
With the application of other technologies, the Navigators guided humanity through the Sea of Souls and directly into the Golden Age of Humanity. Or the Golden Age of Technology. Both are interchangeable. To say that this was the best time to be alive is undoubtedly the understatement of the year. The ability to travel through the warp and the general indifference of the Eldari meant that humanity outright colonized most of the free planets in the galaxy that weren't already occupied. What little we know shows us that humanity was for the most part peaceful and tolerant for all the good it did us in the end. We were capable of wonders of science and... All of this culminated in the invention of something called the Standard Template Construct, or STC. To give an example of how impressive these inventions were, even rumors of one being found today will warrant the death of billions to recover it. STCs in the Golden Age were common. We used them to build legitimately everything you could think of, everything you can need, to learn how to do everything there was to learn. Need to know how to build a biplane? Consult the STC. Need to learn how to build a factory to make shovels? Consult the STC. Here's a better idea of how valuable these things truly are. A group of explorers found an STC fragment, and as payment, the Imperium gave them all their own planets, plural. And the fragment they found made kitchen knives. Most, if not all, of the technology the Imperium currently uses was invented during the Golden Age, and... Also, a bit of context for those who may not know, one of the big, big uh, pros of the STC was also that, that these things, things were also able to take whatever materials were readily available on a given planet and make them into what was needed. So, you don't need, like, any very specific resources. They'll just take whatever is there. Which meant that you could drop an STC on almost any planet, and it would find materials that it could use or substitute to make whatever it was supposed to make. Which is incredibly valuable when you're colonizing worlds, and have no idea what may or may not be there until you actually, you know, get, get down there often for a different purpose. Just to hammer home this point, you've almost certainly heard of something called a Space Marine. Elite Space Marines, first company types, are often outfitted in something called Terminator armor, which quite literally turns the Space Marine into a walking tank. For humans in the Golden Age, this was, was mining, mining equipment. equipment. <laughs> Unfortunately, all good things come to an end, and the Golden Age of technology was no different. Yes. Yeah, like, Terminator armor, or being mining equipment, is just one of those things that kind of just shows how different the scale of technology was during the Golden Age compared to current 40k. History has a sickening way of repeating itself. And the fall from the Golden Age reminds me of something I read in a tome of an event called the Bronze Age Collapse from Terra's Early Histories. If you don't know what happened during the Bronze Age Collapse, let me give you a two-sentence synopsis. Humanity was growing in culture and technology, learning about the planet. Then, in about a decade or less, everything went to hell. The same thing happened at the end of the Golden Age of Technology. Also, as a little bit more context for those who don't know about the Bronze Age Collapse, there were two big things with the Bronze Age Collapse, which was an invasion of a foreign people referred to by most as just the sea people because they came from in from the sea on boats and the fact that the that in the in the area where egypt was and where the bronze age collapse happened societies were very much interconnected and dependent on each other so what would happen is if one kingdom fell then the others would start having problems because they relied on that one kingdom for a particular resource or multiple resources. And as the sea, and as the sea people spread it, it and caused more trouble, it just accelerated the downfall well, because the interdependence and caused the entire system to start falling apart. The emergence of powerful psychers, a rebellion of artificial intelligence, the increasing difficulty of travel through the warp, and a sudden spike in attacks from other species. 
Individually, we could have recovered from each incident, but they all appeared to happen within such close proximity time-wise to each other. The combination was simply overwhelming. Stars dwindled, clusters starved, planets were crushed under the weight of what they manufactured but could not deliver. Oceans were drank and replaced with blood and oil as our machines rebelled against us. The great gears ground to a halt and rusted and withered until the very foundation of a federation which held the galaxy in its grasp disintegrated out from underneath us. And then the hordes came from every miserable and jealous race to gaze upon our capability. Then when the Golden Age civilization was doing everything it could not to drown, the Aldari Empire slammed the final nail in the coffin by destabilizing the Immaterium so badly that safe travel, faster than light, was not possible. The Golden Age of Technology was strangled to death. Looking back, it's no wonder we call the Dark Age of Technology now. It's too hard to look back on what could have been, especially with what came next. Also, context for those who may not know. Yeah, uh, the Eldar kind of murder fucked a hedonistic god into existence. The Eldari, the damnably foolish Eldari, they act so superior to us. They blame us for everything wrong in the universe. They blame us for the miserable state of their existence. If it were up to me, the name of that species would be written as a curse. Aldari. Eldar. They lost themselves to their excesses, their passions, their empire, their species. They brought on the dark time. They brought on the ruin. From their drug-infested dens and pleasure palaces, they never even looked to the stars. They never looked to the galaxy they were getting ready to destroy. They never even looked at us as we died in our trillions. In some ways, I can at least respect the Drakari, the Eldar who even now reeve and torment us. At least, in their own way, they're more honest about what they've done. What they continue to do. The craft worlders in their spite, in their arrogance, I simply can't tolerate. What they really blame us for is surviving. Surviving what they did, and surviving what they allowed themselves to become. Uh, well, technically, I, I'd say that's technically incorrect when you consider that the craft worlders are, are the ones who fled Ed because the farseers is is anchors foresaw what would happen tried warning the other eldar the vast majority didn't listen to them so they took those who would listen aboard the craft worlds and they left from the eldar empire and managed to survive the psychic shock waves of the birth of said hedonist that god i mentioned by virtue of sheer distance from and from the homeland. So, in a way, the ones who are really responsible for it, you can actually see that that's the Drukhari. Cause, because the craft rulers are, are the ones who, and, and who tried to stop it before things, things got too late. The Amaterium, like I said, is fueled by emotions. The more potent, the better. And what could have been for millions of years, the Aldari had been seeking ever greater heights of excess. The warp began to boil with the massed raw power of the hedonism they devolved into, the barbarity. They didn't require the Immaterium to navigate the galaxy, so to them it didn't matter. We didn't matter. Ships were lost, fleets were lost, some of them are still floating in the Sea of Souls even now. The navigators couldn't see us through the violence of the warp. Humanity was once again fractured, lost, unable to reach out across the vast gulf of space, unable to even cry out for help. Some planets had never even been able to grow their own food, and they were the first to die, but they weren't the last. World after world, planet after planet, lost in the dark, fell to desperation, and then death. From a galaxy-spanning civilization that was thriving, 
to a few thousand specks of light in a dark galaxy. Even on those few specks of light, humanity was tearing itself apart. A society of technology and progress reduced to murdering each other to s just simply for the last scraps of food and water. Psyker surged to power unchallenged and unchecked, and all humanity could do was suffer through this dark time. This age of strife. And that's when they came for us. When we were on our knees. When we couldn't fight back. They came for us then. Aliens. Xenos. Every horror this galaxy had that could have been held at bay for thousands or millions of years surged back. Megarachnid, Hrud, Crave, Gaikon, Vrax, Slan, Yuvoth, Orcs. Too many to remember, too many to name, they all came. For 5,000 years they came. And for every benevolent species that might have existed, 10 more were coming. They came to kill us. To enslave us, to humiliate us, to use us as food. They came to destroy us. Have you ever wondered why we have no pity for the Xenos? No remorse for the acts of extermination we carry out? Have you ever wondered why we preach death to the alien? Go back in time. Look what they did to us. Know that given the chance they do it again. Know that even in our darkest time not a single hand reached out to lift us up only to strike us down. Know that if the situation were reversed, they'd gladly do it again or worse. We do the Xenos a mercy by killing them. A mercy they often didn't give to us. Five thousand years of horror. Terror itself became a war zone of You know, that is true considering in what what the Drukhari, Rian, and Yuvath did to humans. Well, the Drukhari with the torture and enslavement, but also the Yuvath with the masses enslavement as well. Which, to give you an idea of it, it did be a, f a handful of Yuvath of ruling a world, and the rest of the entire population would just be human slaves. Which is remarkable to be honest when you consider that their uh, their ability to keep such large numbers of humans in check without you know being immediately overthrown by revolts tribal bands competing for scraps of resources mars turned inwards trying with all their might to safeguard what little technology survived the wars there for 5,000 years, humanity screamed into the silence of space, only surviving in pockets, rare places that somehow avoided the horrors of the times. On countless worlds that are still being rediscovered, we find the bones of those who died there, alone yet uncountable. We will never have a number for them. It was during this darkness that a singular man looked to the skies of terror, clouded with dust and atomic ash, and looked to the stars, and this singular man began to prepare. Five thousand years of horror, five thousand years of isolation, five thousand years of humanity teetering on the knife edge of extinction was about to come to an end. You see, he knew. He had always known. On Terra, a new warlord came forth from the mountains of the Himalayan. For 5,000 years, petty tyrants had warred on the surface. North and Dune, the unspeakable, Kaligan, the list goes on. This new warlord simply called himself the Emperor. Most know nothing more about him than that, but I know. He has been around since the dawn of civilization, since the first cities. People like me have long debated what he really is. An ancient creature far older than the species itself? A collective soul drawn together from shamans who saw the darkness that was to come? None of that truly matters. In the end, he came out of the mountains of the Himalaysia with his lightning bolt standards and began to conquer, drawing humanity together again on the cradle of our species for the first time since the collapse of the society so long ago. The Unification War of Terra lasted over a century, and all the while the Emperor prepared to go further. In his labs, where he worked his gene craft, he made twenty sons. Twenty sons, twenty Primarchs, for twenty legions. Twenty legions of warriors that are known as the Space Marines, Astartes. 
One day his sons, his Primarchs, vanished from his labs, despite every precaution that had been taken to keep them safe. They were thought to be lost due to some accident, vanished from beneath the mountains where he made them, but he knew, he knew better. As the War of Unification drew the last war bands on Terra into the first unified government on the planet, the Emperor went to Terra's red neighbor and made an alliance with Mars. They viewed the Emperor as a representation of their god, the Machine God. If they only really knew that this perception had been planned, that their first meeting and the prophecies that surrounded that meeting had been... <laughs> That's for another time. It seems strange to an outsider, someone who doesn't understand, but if anyone ever questioned him, they kept it to themselves. Oh, by the way, a thing about the God Emperor of Mankind as well is that, it, it, as is mentioned about being around since the dawn of, of civilization, and he, he actually, he spent most of his time in the background, guiding humanity without really showing himself or directly involving himself but he, but he made himself known and started to take more or direct action because well during the age of strife on earth was overrun with techno barbarians and, and he and nothing less than his direct involvement and would have fixed the situation so his hand was forced so to speak he ordered fleets to be built. He purged the Xenos that had taken over the outer planets of the Soul System. And while the Emperor prepared to address his new nation, the Imperium of Mankind, he once more looked to the stars, watching as the last grains of sand of time ran out on the oldest empire in the galaxy. The Eldari, blind to what they had done and not caring for what they were doing, had fed the warp to bursting. The birth screen of what they had fed with their depravity tore a hole in the fabric of reality, swallowing the core worlds of the Empire straight into the bowels of the warp itself. This implosion of the warp ripped the souls of the Eldari out of their bodies for thousands of light years across. A civilization that had survived unchallenged for over 60 million years was snuffed out in an instant, with their few survivors hiding in pocket dimensions are too far away to be harmed. In an instant, the Aldari Empire had been completely snuffed out, and the warp storms that had isolated the worlds of mankind were extinguished. The Great Crusade had begun. The massive effort of the newly founded Astartes legions and the Imperial Army and the Emperor to reunify humanity under a single banner for the first time in thousands of years. Humanity reunited with its lost kinsmen, sometimes peacefully, sometimes not so peacefully. Worlds were freed from the Xenos that had enslaved them, the Psychers that had subverted them. Some worlds rejoiced to join us. A few had to be forced. We destroyed the Xenos that devoured us in our helplessness. We purged the mutants who did the same. The Imperium demanded compliance, with the first rule being to denounce any gods. It's painfully ironic, isn't it? The Imperium demanding its citizens embrace atheism. The lost Primarchs were found. The lost sons of the Emperor brought back into the fold to leave the Astartes. We found all of them. You know, just... Imagine the torment that the Emperor must be going through right now, not just because he's on the Golden Throne, having to maintain concentration to maintain the Astronomicon, and prevent a second Eye of Terror, terror from tearing open on Terra, which the Eye of Terror is the name of the huge warp rift that, that occurred when, when the Eldar, you know, created that hedonistic god, but, and it swallowed the souls of, of most Eldar for for quite some distance around. But just imagine how the current day Imperium, in the where it's so theocratic and oppressive, and how it's in many ways a polar opposite of the Emperor's vision, and, see, and seeing what the dream has become. The Emperor was just a man, and everyone makes mistakes. Everyone. 
He made his fair share. We were so close, you see. The Emperor was not just taking back all the worlds to reunify humanity. That was... That was not far enough. He was trying to secure our future. Humanity has one critical weakness. A weakness that the Emperor saw long ago and had been working to correct it. We, as a species, are weak to the whispers of the warp. The creatures that live in it. We are weak to their power, their influence. The Immaterium is always seeking, always whispering. And there are things within it that promise power, pleasure, life, and wisdom. Even the knowledge of these creatures is dangerous. This is why we tried so hard during the Crusade to do away with belief in the spiritual, in religion, in the supernatural. Rely on science to provide answers. And as far as the esoteric, well, we simply haven't gotten the right answer yet. We are weak to those whispers from the Immaterium, but we are so linked to it. The Emperor was gathering us up into one Imperium to attempt to sever that link once and for all, to silence the whispers, to remove the reliance we had on the warp for travel and communication even. The Emperor was trying to ensure that we would never again fall victim to the wiles of the Immaterium, or the indifference or the hostility of the Xenos. In that, he failed. Horus, his most favorite son, rebelled. He rebelled because the Emperor lied, lied to us all, to try to keep us safe. Beings in the Immaterium told Horus 99% of the truth, 99% of the facts. They showed Horus a future that was a nightmare to behold, the Emperor worshipped as a god. They showed him the horror that would be 10,000 years in the future. They told him 99% of the truth. They simply decided not to tell Horus that he was the one who would bring this horror into reality. These beings that led Horus astray, we have a name for them. It is the great enemy, Chaos. For seven years, the Imperium fought a war that made all of the wars pale in comparison. It ended in orbit of Terra some 10,000 years ago. Horus was slain. Several other Primarchs were gone, and half of them had turned traitor. Trillions were dead. The Emperor was fatally wounded and was placed on the apparatus known as the Golden Throne. Another irony, sick and twisted irony. The symbol of what was to be the greatest triumph of humanity has become a symbol of its complete stagnation. The galaxy burned with the light of a thousand conflicts. This light was the dawn of the Age of the Imperium. Ten thousand years later, and here I sit. The Emperor is now worshipped as the one true god of mankind. The ruthless investigators of the Inquisition hunt down anyone who says otherwise. The Imperium, newly born during the Great Crusade, was mortally wounded so long ago. We are doomed. The last hope we had is still sitting on the Golden Throne. His life work turned to ash and fire. The Emperor is a rotting corpse somehow still clinging to life. The man who worked for his entire life to abolish our reliance on the Immaterium now is our only guiding light within it. Powering the Astronomicon, a lighthouse within the warp that the navigators can see in its depths and use as a reference point in the increasingly turbulent nature of the Immaterium. Warp storms cut off entire sectors. Trillions die every year to plague, starvation, and war. The Imperium is invaded almost daily by Xenos who will take any advantage they can. Chaos threatens to envelop the galaxy and plunge us all into darkness. Ancient creatures wake up on worlds looking to reassert their dominance, and from the darkness of the deep void, the Hive comes to devour us all. What should have been the second golden age has turned into a true dark age. The Imperium, only a bleak of an eye into its life, was fatally wounded, and all we can do is fight off the predators while steadily cutting away infection. We are buried under the weight of bureaucracy and never-ending threats that assail us, a galaxy-wide civilization, always under the threat of collapse, always under the threat of extinction. We could recover. We would recover. If only we were given a moment to breathe. If only we had a few years to recuperate. If only we had the chance to stand back up. We aren't gonna get this, and we know it. 
So we continue, an entire civilization standing on the knife edge of survival and extinction. Threats come through endless attacks from Xenos who can seek weakness, or those who simply want to kill. Threats come from within to those drunk on power, of those who do not understand. All the while the whispers of the great enemy slip words of sedition to the ears of all of us. We simply never seem to have the time. Time to fix the problems in our society. Time to make things better. Time to improve. Time to heal. So we just continue. Decay running rampant. The walls are collapsing around us, but we can't stop fighting for long enough to fix them. The people are sick and hurt, but we can't stop preparing for the next fight long enough to treat them. Leaders are corrupt, but we can't stop to replace them because we need them to keep this machine going. This machine keeps running. The belts are coming off. The cogs are stripped. It rattles and shrieks like it's going to come apart at any moment. And in the background, a noise that no one can hear. Here is the only noise that really matters. A single heartbeat coming from a throne under a mountain in the Himalayas. And should that single heartbeat stop, this machine falls apart. Inertia alone is the only thing that keeps this machine going, this corpse of a civilization going, which keeps us running. Sheer momentum is the only thing that keeps us holding on. We'd love to stop and fix it. We'd love to take a moment and breathe and correct it. We can't. So why is the Imperium like this? Why do the corrupt rule with iron fists? Why is the rebellion? Why is the price of a life so cheap? Why do we call for the purging of the Xenos, the mutant, and the heretic? Why are we so intolerant, so militaristic, and so hateful? Because there is no time! No understanding, no striving for a better tomorrow, no tolerance, and no patience for complacency. There is only war! And how true that is, that in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. Because the Imperium really is, as he said, it, stuck, essentially. If, if the Imperium can be viewed as an empire in collapse, because they really are, ju are just, just doing everything they can just to hold on and survive. But I, I hope you all enjoyed it watching with me. It, it was fun. It was fun to watch, even though I oh, I knew a lot of this lore already. Yeah, and if you enjoyed watching with me, yeah, I'd appreciate if you like, comment, and subscribe. And reminder to check out Old Man's channel. Well, he really he really deserves the attention. He does great work. But until next time, ta-ta!